Lord, breathe on us afresh today. Give every one of us a touch of a lifetime. Holy Ghost, change every man's story for the better this month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And you may please be seated. Shall we one more time echo together the prophetic focus for the month? I am riding the waves of glory by the Holy Ghost. One more time. The waves of glory by the Holy Ghost. For the last time now, I am riding the waves of glory by the Holy Ghost. From Joel chapter 2 and verse 21, he said, Fear not, O land, and be glad, because the Lord will do great things. The Holy Ghost is the facilitator of great things. He is the one behind the manifestation of great things. Fear not. Rejoice and be glad, because the Lord will do great things. He must have spoken to that young man, drop this 50 naira and trek home. Amen. Because I want to launch you into a great realm, into a realm of greatness. And that same day, came by a property that was so touching, million and had his own commission from it. And somebody said, look, we just prayed for you for your house in Calabar. We can have a house where we are not living. It's, a, it's the facilitator of great things. Fear not, rejoice and be glad because the Lord will do great things. Verse 23 said, I've given you the former rain moderately. Talking about the anointing, but I'll cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and later rain in the first month. Joel 2.23 and the floor shall be filled with wheat, and the vase shall burst out with new wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts has eaten, the caterpillar, the palmer one, my great army which I sent among you. And my people shall eat and plenty and be satisfied, and my people shall never be ashamed. And in once and again in verse 27, and my people shall never be ashamed. So the mission of the Holy Ghost, among others, is to wipe away shame. So whatever remains as a trace of shame around anyone's life, the Holy Ghost is wiping them off this month. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. The Holy Ghost is wiping them off this month. I said the Holy Ghost is wiping every shame off every life this month. Somebody believe that, let me hear your loudest, Amen. And I like also the church to understand that what we have done in our ministry worldwide is to ensure that every of our services is unique in its nature. So this month, for instance, we are exploring the subject of the mission of the Holy Ghost in our Sunday services. What is his mission in our lives? And then, at the midweek services, we are going to be looking at the power of the Holy Ghost. Understanding the power of the Holy Ghost. And then in our brief exhortations, in the Saturday Satellite Fellowship, we are looking at understanding the benefits of the Holy Ghost. And all we are doing is to be sure that everyone is helped. To see the need to flow in the Holy Ghost so as to maximize your life on earth. So tomorrow, this morning we begin our series under the caption, Understanding the Mission of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, Part 1B. Understanding the Mission of the Holy Ghost, Part 1B. Let us first appreciate the fact that the Holy Ghost is a person. In fact, is the third person of the Godhead. So we talk about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Is the third person of the Godhead. 
1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is a person. The Holy Ghost is a person. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, and then the Word, who is Jesus, and then the Holy Ghost. And the three agree in one. And so we have a creation that evolved out of a relay. The Father created the world, and then the Son redeemed the world, and the Holy Ghost comes down to restore the world back to glory. So we are here under the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. Can I hear your amen? amen? We are here under the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. And I'd like you to appreciate this morning that the Holy Ghost is your most essential partner in the journey of life. It's your God-ordained helper in the adventure of life. It's your most reliable helper, your most dependable helper, your indispensable helper. His name is the Holy Ghost. He is the one that gives real value to redemption. He is the one that makes living profitable. The Bible says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to profit with. First Corinthians 12 verse 7. Think of it. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, God made man out of the dust. And man was standing there, a statue. And then God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So without that breath, man was a dead statue. That's why we say the Holy Ghost is the one that gives meaning to living. He gives meaning to living. So when you are saved, it's the Holy Ghost that gives meaning to your redemption. Your redemption will be a religious statue without the Holy Ghost. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? James 2 verse 26. James was saying, the body without the spirit is dead. So it is the spirit that actually makes life meaningful. You are dead without the spirit. So without the Holy Ghost, a believer has no value. Remember, Jesus came on a mission as the Messiah. But his mission could not find expression until he was empowered by the Spirit of God. For 30 years, he was in the carpenter's shed, the Savior of the world who have no expression without the Holy Ghost. That's cheap enough for us to understand that without the Holy Ghost, no one fulfills destiny. No one believer fulfills destiny without the Holy Ghost. Jesus taught the disciples for three and a half years. They were not attending his church. They were living with him. And he said, don't go anywhere. Oh. Your mission cannot be delivered. Your destiny cannot be fulfilled until you are endued with power from on high. So no matter the depth of teaching one may have, Without a personal experience with the Holy Ghost, life remains a struggle. Life remains a struggle. These great world changers were locked up in one room, hiding away from the authorities. Hiding away from the authorities. Until the Holy Ghost came, and then they took over. 
no matter the greatness of a destiny, it can never be fulfilled or realized without the Holy Ghost. Now we had this great vision in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 1 to 6. You know, I saw seven golden candlesticks with bows on them, all of gold. And I said, this is the word of the Lord to Jerusalem, to Zerubbabel. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. So the greatness of any vision will only find fulfillment by the Holy Ghost. So without the Holy Ghost, every vision is lifeless. Without the Holy Ghost, every destiny remains a, is reduced to a destitute. The Holy Ghost is the one that gives real meaning to your life and my life. Jesus could not manifest his majesty. The apostles could not deliver without the Holy Ghost. And no vision can be fulfilled without the Holy Ghost. That's why this month is very crucial and vital to every one of us. Is our most dependable helper, our most reliable companion, is the one that makes our life in the kingdom meaningful. I'd like you to desire an encounter with his person this month. Because that is the beginning of your profitable adventure on the earth. I met this man, the Holy Ghost, in 1976. My life has never been the same. Ever since that time. I said, Holy Spirit, if truly you are a person, guide me to where these fellows are. I must not, I don't want to ask anybody. A person and you guide us. So take over right now. Go forward. He's a real person. He's not a feeling. He's not a falling. He's not a tonguing. He's a person. And he directed me by himself in a town. He's a unique personality. You may not see him, but he's so real. Now remove that experience from my life. I will be a struggler like anybody else. He still speaks to me today, loud and clear, on every vital issue of my life. On every vital issue of my life. One day, I got down to the office in the old church and I said, bring all the cash you got in this office down now. Ah, what's happening? And then, I said, I hope it's all over. He says, it's all over. Put it in my car. Write everything you put there. Good night. Two hours after that, strangers invaded the premises and found zero. It's a most profitable companion in the journey of life. I'll be on the journey and he said, check back now. Thank you, Jesus. Driver, turn back. Because it's your rescue from danger. Imagine, he said, this is the place. And somebody said they bury a cow. No, we bury the Holy Ghost. <laughs> when God speaks everything, He hears. There was no way I would be near Lagos. We were having a really great time in Kaduna. We dominated the place. Not that we have left, we are still dominating the place. You mess up, you are gone. <laughs> But he said, arise, get down to Lagos, raise my people. Every step of our journey in this triumphant ministry came by the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Came by what? Seek a quiet place. I want to talk to you. Who is that? 
the Holy Ghost. He said, it will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Once I shall hear that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. John 16, 12 and 13. Please understand this. That is your most dependable, reliable, valuable, profitable, meaningful companion. Until you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot fulfill destiny. Until you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and stay filled with the Holy Spirit, you cannot fulfill your glorious destiny. Come and say, I have a glorious destiny. Say it convincingly. Say it meaningfully. You have been called unto glory and virtue, or call it glory and honor, not shame and reproach. And the Holy Ghost is the one that facilitates the realization of that calling. You cannot fulfill destiny without remaining filled with the Holy Spirit. We also understand that Everyone matures by use. Everything matures by use. So it's important to know the mission of the Holy Ghost so we can engage Him and then maintain His vibrant ministry in our lives. So we look at two specific missions of the Holy Spirit this morning. It's number one mission that many have not come into grips with is winning souls for the kingdom. That is his number one task. Ask chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and to the uttermost part of the earth. You shall receive power, and you shall be witnesses unto me. You shall receive power. You shall be empowered to become effective witnesses effective witnesses. So whenever you don't put anything to use, it goes flat. No matter how charged the battery of your car is, if you don't touch that battery for two, three weeks, maximum four weeks, it goes flat. It's a brand new battery, but it goes flat for lack of engagement. Lack of engagement. Lack of engagement. Some of you have a number of cars. There are some you don't use often. If you check your record very well, you are spending as much on it and much more most of the time than the one you are using. Because by sitting it down, you are running it down by the law of entropy. It goes down. It goes down. It goes down. Winning souls into the kingdom is the principal mission of the Holy Ghost. Let's now prove it. He descended in Acts chapter 2. Cloven tongues as of fire, mighty rushing wind, filled the whole house, and the world filled with the Holy Ghost. And he delivered his principal mission by Rushing 3,000 souls into the kingdom. Not one reported signs or wonders or healings or deliverance. He shows his primary mission by rushing 3,000 souls into the kingdom. So his primary mission is not signs and wonders. He's reaching out to the lost. Now, in 
John 16 verse 7 to 11. It's expedient for you that I go. If I go not away, the comforter will not come. But when I go, he will come. I will send him unto you. And when he's come, what happens? He will convict the world of sin. Of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me. Of righteousness because I go to the Father. And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged already. Now you can see the sequence. When it's come, he will convict the world of sin. He will convict the world of righteousness. And then of judgment. That is, it will mess up the devil. But you see, salvation first. Righteousness next. And then diverse manifestations follow. So there are many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. But I'll be when it's come. It will guide you into all truth. So all the other blessings follow after salvation. Is somebody clear? Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Now, now, that is so important. So when a believer is not given to soul winning, his spiritual battle goes flat. When a church, that's why you find a lot of people messing up on the TV today. There is nothing about salvation. It's give money. Come on, give money. Give money. Give money. Nothing. No, no. Many churches don't make no altar call. Their backs is gone flat. The Holy Ghost has left longest time. He's just making empty noise all over town. Bring money now. Joshua 12 1. 12 dollars 10 cents. They look for money from every page of scripture. No testimony of chain life. And you find men of honor. Like Billy Graham, this man got saved 60 years ago. He's given testimony. You find men of honor, like T.L. Osborne. This man, this woman was blind and got healed at uh, this crusade 60 years ago. The moment so many is out of the church, apostasy sets in. Because the Holy Ghost's principal mission is to see people saved. Today our four parents on both sides are going to be with the Lord. Each of them is in heaven. You can't survive my environment without salvation. It's impossible. It's impossible. How can I watch you go to hell when I know the way to heaven? Where is the love of God? If that is true. Christianity is not a club. It's not. Believe me, apostasy has gripped the charismatic church today. Many churches no altar call, no nothing. They are even discussing gay marriage. They are not, not everything has gone flat. Gone flat. No testimony of change of life. And there is nothing about ministry but testimonies of changed lives. His primary mission is to see people saved. And he did that in a grand style in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2, verse 41, 3,000 got saved. Acts chapter 3, verse 6 to 10, the crippled man got healed. 1, 1, 3,000, 1. And then Acts chapter 4, verse 4, 5,000 got saved. 5,000. Hmm? Acts chapter 5, verse 14, multitude, you can't count again, multitude of men and women. Acts 5, verse 14. And Acts 6, chapter 7, he said, and the name of Zephyrus multiplied greatly. Now, from that as two to six is only one healing we saw. We have changed the thing the other way around. When you engage the Holy Ghost in some way, you keep your battery alive. You keep your spiritual battery alive. You keep the life in your battery alive. <laughs> Go put this to work today, man, and then you see the change in your life. There is nothing God has asked you to do that does not leave you with benefit. One crucial benefit of soul winning is entitlement to answer prayers. John 15, 16. You have not chosen, but I have chosen you and are for danger. You go and bring rough fruit that your fruit will abide. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. 
that whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give it to you. There is nothing God is asking you and I to do without attendant benefits that await us. You are going to see the wonders of answered prayers this month. You are going to see the wonders of answered prayers this month. You are going to see the wonders of answered prayers this month. You are going to see the wonders of answered prayers this month. You are going to see the wonders of answered prayers this month. That's the way it works. The reason the Holy Ghost fire is still burning here is that every day our sole goal is God get somebody else saved today. Holy Ghost, reach out to somebody else today. Holy Ghost, preserve the ones who have saved. And that's why without asking for other things, they have been added to us. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. A commitment, a genuine commitment to soul winning and that is a supernatural addition of blessings. Experience of favor. So watch out for it. Don't just sit down watching life pass you by. Engage actively by the word of God and you see things happening in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Only those who engage in reaching out to the lost can keep the fire of the Holy Ghost burning because that is his core mission. Remember, whatever is not put to effective use soon becomes disused. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18 He said, By slothfulness a building decays. And by idleness of hands, a house drops through. By slothfulness, a building decays. And by idleness of hands, a house drops through. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. Glory to God. Now, how does the Holy Ghost empower us for so winning? Number one, he directs us to ready souls. He directs us. Like he did for Philip and the people, you know. He directed him to the man. He said, join yourself to that chariot. And then he got on the chariot. And engage the Ethiopian you know. And we saw him, God saved. Ask chapter 8, verse 29 to 47. We saw him, God saved. He directed them there. The same way he directed Peter to go down with the people that were sent from Cornelius. And we saw the heavens open to the Gentiles. He specializes in directing us to ready souls in our neighborhood, ready souls in our workplace, ready souls in our business centers, ready souls in our marketplaces. He directs us to ready souls. Therefore, this month, I see the Holy Ghost directing you to some ready souls where you are. Yeah. However, everyone in your household is a candidate for heaven. How many of them? He said you shall be saved. And what? And your household. And you know your household in Africa is not your wife and your children. Eh? Everybody that is connected with you it's a member of your household. So every member of your household is ordained for heaven. Ordained for what? Ordained for heaven. Every member of your household is ordained for heaven. So you can't say it's not leading me. It's leading you. That one is your regular covenant responsibility. 
covenant responsibility. He directs us to ready souls. Number two, his, he pricks the heart of sinners to repent. He pricks the heart of sinners to repent. He pricks the heart of sinners to repent. Ask chapter 3, I mean chapter 2, verse 37. The Bible said they were pricked in their heart. They were pricked. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said, Unto Peter, men and brethren, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And they did what they were told to do, and 3,000 of them got saved. He does not only direct you to ready souls, he convicts them. He convicts them. That's why we call him the Lord of the harvest. He directs you to ready souls, and he's the one that convicts them. Of their sins, he convinced them of the need for righteousness, and he convinced them of judgment against the devil. Can I hear your amen? How the Holy Ghost empowers us for effective soul winning. Number three. The Holy Ghost provokes the flow of signs and wonders. Because there are some that will never believe except they see signs. And Jesus says that because in John chapter 4, by a sign, almost the hope in the city gave their life to Christ. Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. And many people of that city believed. Many people. John chapter 4. And verse 39, you know the story of the, good, the Samaritan woman, many people of that city and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So that miracle was to draw people to the kingdom. And verse 41, we are told also, that are many more believed because of his own word. Many more believed. And I see. So the whole sense of that spiritual manifestation was to draw people to the kingdom. The Holy Ghost provokes the flow of signs and wonders, thereby drawing people to the kingdom. Signs and wonders is one of the effective tools for soul winning. One of the effective tools for soul winning. In John 4, 48. The word says, they will not believe. Jesus said, except you see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. So there's a group of people that will not believe anything, except they see signs and wonders. And the Holy Ghost is the trigger for signs and wonders. When the Holy Ghost came on Jesus, the Bible says he anointed him to set the captives free, to bind the brokenhearted, to open the eyes of the blind, you know, and... To let the oppressed go free. So the anointing is the trigger for signs and wonders that draws multitude into the kingdom. Those are three ways the Holy Ghost empowers us for effective soul winning. Very importantly, number two great mission of the Holy Ghost is access to revelation. What do I call it? Access to revelation. Access to revelation. The Holy Ghost is the author of scriptures. And that's why is the most reliable interpreter of scriptures. Second Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. All scriptures is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. All scriptures came by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Now, you remember in Second Peter chapter 1, he said, No scripture is of any private interpretation, but holy men speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 
Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the real author of scriptures. Now Isaiah 34 and verse 16. It says, Seek out of the book of the law and read. None of this shall fail. Neither shall anyone that made. For my mouth, my spirit, it has gathered them. And my mouth, it has spoken them. My mouth has spoken it. My spirit has gathered them. So the word of God is gathered by the spirit of God. And so only the spirit of God can unravel it. Can I hear your amen? That's why a natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually designed. First Corinthians 2 and verse 14. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritual contents. And they can only be spiritually unraveled. So the Holy Ghost is the most reliable interpreter of scriptures. The most reliable interpreter of scriptures. That's so important. Is the author of the word and the most reliable interpreter of the same. Jesus said, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot grasp them now. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. John 16 and verse 12. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. Verse 13 of he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you. He is the one that shows us the truth. He shows us the truth from scriptures. He will show you things to come. He will show you the things that are in stock for you. So that's his job. Somebody's blessed here already. Somebody wrote me a letter, which I saw only yesterday. And... My officer just put urgent on it. This minister of the gospel said he had just gone through 40 days of fasting, read the whole Bible, but he said, I understood nothing. The Holy Ghost is the facilitator of spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding is the ministry of the Holy Ghost. It's not the ministry of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting will activate the ministry of the Holy Ghost in helping you. God cannot help you understand it on his own. He is the one giving the custody of the truth. Can I hear your amen? Somebody's blessed. That looks like you. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. So he is the interpreter of the truth. He's the most reliable interpreter of the truth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, it's a popular scripture here in church. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, it has not entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. But the Spirit of God searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. Yea, the deep things of God. He searches all things. Yea, the deep, deep things of God. And verse 11 says, With things we speak, not with the wisdom which man teaches, but with the Holy Ghost. For, we say, for what man knows the things of man, save the spirit of man in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but by the Spirit of God. So you can't know the things of God except by the Holy Spirit. He said, with things we teach, verse 12, not with the wisdom which man, with, with, with which man wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teaches. Compare the spiritual things with spiritual. That's in verse 13 of Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So by the Holy Ghost we come to know the things that are freely given to us. We struggle about too many things. 
These things are freely available. Freely available. Holy Ghost, why are things not working for me? And it takes you down where your trouble is. For it searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. But every day you justify yourself. I've done everything I should do. Thank you. Go and arrest God. You haven't done the right thing. You have done everything. People fail exam. Also wrote all the answers. They, wrote, they answered all the questions. That to answer all the questions does not guarantee a pass mark. You must get correct answers. Stop bragging. I've done all this. Is God not a liar? Stop that. These are all religious entrapments. I've done all this. I don't know why. Go and challenge him. The meek will he teach in the way that he shall choose. Many are too big headed to be helped by God. Anything wrong around my life is my fault. There are things I do not know, and there are things perhaps I know and have not done. God is never to blame for where you are. You blame him today, you suffer shame tomorrow. As long as Job kept justifying himself, he couldn't discover the root of his problem. So the let's open up. Your fear brought you into a snare. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I thought it was you doing me. There is nothing negative about our life that is God's fault. There is nothing negative about your life that is God's fault. Check it out. But I know that the month of April, as the Lord liveth, this month started in church. It started on a Sunday. I mean, your celebration begins this month. How do I engage the Holy Ghost for revelation? You can activate the teaching ministry of the Holy Ghost through praise. Through what? You can activate the teaching ministry of the Holy Ghost through praise. You shall have a song as in the night. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 29 and 30. You shall have a song as in the night when the holy solemnity is kept with gladness of heart. As when one goeth forth to the, with a pipe to the mountain of the Lord. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. You know, Revelation is hearing from God. Hearing from what? For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So you can activate his teaching ministry by high praises. High praises. The Lord shall cause his glorious voice. He will cause his revelation to flow as you praise him. Now this is simple. In Psalm 100, he said, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his cause with praise. And let's worship him and bless his holy name. Now, in Psalm 16, verse 11, he said, Thou will show me the path of life, for in thy presence is fullness of life. So, to gain access to his presence, you need praise. And in his presence, you are entitled to access the path of life. This month, the next thing to do, to bring about a turnaround that you desire, he will reveal it to you. It's so important. We engage in high praises to facilitate the teaching ministry of the Holy Ghost. I want to believe that next to salvation, revelation remains your greatest asset. Next to what? Salvation. 
Revelation remains your greatest asset. Why? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Two, he has given all things, given us all things that make for life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Second Peter 1, 3. Through the knowledge of him who has called us unto glory and virtue. I said next to salvation, revelation remains your greatest asset in the kingdom. It stops your life from being molested by the devil. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. John chapter 8 and verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5, and that light shines in darkness and darkness can molest it. So revelation remains your greatest asset next only to salvation. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? The brighter the light in which you walk, the brighter you shine. Revelation remains your greatest asset next only to salvation. Revelation, revelation, revelation. Acts chapter 2, 20 verse 32. He said, I commend to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give your own inheritance among those which are sanctified. So your inheritance is only accessible by revelation. So you are robbed of your inheritance without revelation. Acts chapter 20 verse 32. You are robbed of your inheritance without revelation. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Those who do know their God, what happens? They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So men of exploits are men and women of light. Men and women of depth. Men and women of strange insight. So remove all of that from redemption. It remains a religious frustration. It becomes a it's reduced to a religious frustration. Remove access to inheritance. Remove liberty from satanic harassment. And then what do you have? I said, next to salvation, revelation remains your greatest asset in the journey of life. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But by revelation you'll be exempted. By revelation you'll be distinguished. And the Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. Revelation is it? A church can't stop growing because it's growing by revelation. It's growing by what? And wherever the carcasses, there are the eagles, we gather. And people must be crazy to think that you plant a cow to grow a church. Cows are very cheap. Cows go and buy, you can even buy seven, so you can grow seven times. People have cockroach brain. Cockroach brain. Because life begins like, if you bury a cow, you have many cows. But God said to me, keep sowing the seed. And as the grass grows, the sheep will come for it. And keep the grass green, and the sheep will lie down there. For he maketh me to lie down on green pasture. March 1984. March 1984. Now, I'm teaching you on the Holy Ghost now. Read all the books that I've written. You won't find this one there. And keep the grass green, and the sheep will lie down there. You never come to this church without having something to write in your life. You have read all books, but you still write something. Because something is dropping for you that only came to me myself yesterday. So there's no way you have gotten it. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody is here, your life is taking a new turn this time. 
if you don't have genuine value for revelation, you have made yourself a candidate of frustration. Because revelation is your way out of every frustration of life. Revelation is your way out of every frustration of life. Arise and shine because your light is come. No matter how gross the darkness, light will dispel it. This is your chance for a change of story. When that came to me on kingdom prosperity, I screamed and said, Yea, I can never be poor. We just finished my mother's burial, a very glorious one. We didn't pray for anything. He didn't pray for nothing. That God sent us money to do what? What are you going to do with it? It's a very simple life. When that light came, I had no bank account. But my heavenly account was heavy. I saw it. And I saw how to service it. And I kept servicing it from that time. Man is walking. I'm not just wealthy, I'm super wealthy. Because anything I need comes as I need them. And comes in excess of what I will need. Somebody said your life is taking a new turn. <laughs> it's one thing to read, it's another thing to see it. And you not have what you read, you have what you see. As far as your eyes can see, unto you will I give it. So you have to see it to possess it. The Holy Ghost is the eye opener. This month it will open your eyes. Yeah. You have heard many stories. You will see the mysteries this month. Yeah. You have heard many stories, but you will see the mysteries this month. Yeah. Somebody believe that and shout the loudest amen. Yeah. Shout the loudest amen. Yeah. After I met the Holy Ghost in 1976, in the month of July, the month of September, he showed me what I call the jackpot of life. Matthew 6, 33. And he said, Seek ye first my kingdom and all his demands. And all these things that others are dying to get. I had it from him. You know, he said, He shall not speak of himself. Whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. That others are dying to get. They shall be added to you. I can tell you this, I went mad with it. Every true revelation intoxicates. I went mad with it and wrote a very deep covenant of cometa. I'll live with that till I die. It's soothing, it's fulfilling, it's enriching. So when you have encounter with the Holy Ghost, He opens your eyes to what others may not see. This month shall be an eye opening month for you. The next step that will open up the next chapter of your business, of your career, of your profession, of your family, of your children, will be opened up to you this month. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Revelation is your greatest asset, next only to salvation. And from that time on, I've not had anything to seek. It's just been adding things to me. I mean, it's interesting to know that even my wife, I didn't have to pray to get a wife. I was just on my journey, on a soul-winning journey. And he said to me, that's your wife. Simple. And what a blessing today. What others struggle for, from today, it will be a walkover for you. Engage the Holy Ghost for revelations because that is your greatest asset. Amen. You use high praises to do that. And number two, you engage in the art of study. And then as you sit at His feet, He opens to you the mysteries from scriptures. Second Timothy 2.15, study. To show yourself approved unto God as a workman that will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And who is the teacher when you see that? The Holy Ghost. 
First Corinthians 2 13 that we read the other time. Not with words, with man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Every time you pick the Bible, you pick a noted book, you pick tapes, just invite him. Holy Ghost, open me up to the treasures that are loaded in this material for me. Holy Ghost, open me up to the mysteries that is in these scriptures. Holy Ghost, open me up to the mysteries behind these teachings that I'm going to listen to. You invite him consciously. He's the eye opener. He's the grand teacher. He's the revelator. And then he will open you to the next things in your life. Can I hear your amen? Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. In conclusion, engage the Holy Spirit in soul winning. Engage him in your quest for revelation. And you keep his vibrant ministry in your life. This is the way it works. This month is declared a month of testimonies for you. And the Bible talks about the word of his testimony. The word of his testimony. The word of his Every word of God carries testimony James. When you encounter the word, testimonies naturally resolve. Therefore, this month, by the revelation of the word, amazing testimonies will begin to result in your life. Yes. Choir stand and let us all stand together. It is raining all around me. This is our Holy Ghost month, a month of encounters in the Holy Ghost. Encounters with the Holy Ghost. That's your month. Your month of change. Your month of turnaround. Hallelujah. It is raining all around me. I can feel it. The last of it. desire the new wine this month. Very simple way to the new wine. He said, turn ye at my reproof, and I will pour my spirit upon you, and make my words known unto you. Proverbs 1.23 The new wine is for those who will care to turn when they are reproved. It's a tony that entitles you to the outpouring. Proverbs 1, 23. Turn you at my reproof, and I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will pour my revelation on your life. Turn. It's never late to be right. Turn. You are not entitled to the new wine without a turning. It's never late to be right. Repentance is never late. And forgiveness is ever accessible by all true repentance. Repentance is never late. And forgiveness is ever accessible 
by all that would truly repent. You must not miss the new wine this month. It will be too costly. Don't miss it. Turn! Because new wine must be put into new wine bottles. Whatever you know will forbid the pouring of the Spirit in your life. Lift up your hands and then ask Jesus, forgive me. I want the new wine this month. I want to experience the reality of the new wine this month. This month must not be like any other month. This month must not be like any other month in my life. This month must not be like any other month in my life. I want to experience the pouring of the new wine. I want to experience the reality of the fresh oil. Holy Ghost fire, clean me up. Purge me thoroughly. I must not miss the wonders of your manifestation this month. Somebody is praying because it's your month of breakthrough. You are riding the waves of the of glory by the Holy Ghost this month. Pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Jesus, precious name we are praying. The new task will always entitle you to the outpouring of the Spirit. Come and say genuine task. Genuine task. I said, because we were taught that the Holy Ghost was not necessary after salvation. From an evangelical background, it was not necessary that when you are saved, then you are filled with the Holy Ghost. So we were confused. And I was even preaching it to myself. But one day, because I saw emptiness in me. I said, Holy Ghost, if you are anywhere, feel me by yourself. And I went to bed. And someone came to tap me for a meeting on my bed. And as he tapped me, I broke, blew, explosive tongues. A task sent me to bed. The Holy Ghost woke me out of bed. So you can be baptized with a task, and you can be recharged with a task. Spirit of God, stir up an unquenchable task for the appearing of your spirit in my life. Go ahead and pray. I want to go forward. I want to move forward. I want to march forward. Somebody pray from the depth of your heart. It's not a man to be freed. We have to continue to receive until the day of his appearing. Stir up an unquenchable task in me. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. It was through the book of Tia Lord Born, I encountered the person of the Holy Ghost. He showed up. Amen. He said, and the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. Grace to encounter the Holy Ghost through those recommended books. Receive it right now. Somebody speak to the Lord in one minute. I receive grace for a definite encounter with the person of the Holy Ghost. As I open up to these resource materials. This month, in the name of Jesus, no more guesswork, no more guesswork, no more guesswork. I want an experience with the Holy Ghost. I want an experience with the Holy Ghost. I want an experience with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, 
one of my sons here shared a testimony. He was baptized in the Holy Ghost in 1993, reading the book, Anointing for Breakthrough, one of our pastors here today. He just got to that place and I said, now you can receive the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus Christ. And then, boom, he began to speak in tongues. Somebody's here, your life is taking a new turn. What you don't seek, you never find. Those who don't pass for the Holy Ghost don't have him. And if you don't engage him, you lose him. If you don't engage him, he goes flat. He will not go flat in your life. May the things that have been imparted to you be fully engaged this month. This month, I see you engaging the Holy Ghost for effective soul winning in the name of Jesus. I see you engaging the Holy Ghost for revelation in the name of Jesus. Now go in peace. This month is declared a month of testimonies for you. This month is declared a month of breakthroughs for you. This month is declared a month of encounters with the Holy Ghost for you. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is blocking the authority of the Spirit in your life is caused in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. We believe that you have been blessed by today's teaching. To get more materials and resources online, visit our website at www.davidoedipalministries.org.